In South Australia I was born Oh, heave away, all away South Australia I came born We're bound for South Australia All the way The largest regional city in South Australia is about 450 kilometers south of the capital Adelaide or 435 kilometers west of Melbourne, Victoria. Though established in 1854, it was not until a century later when Mount Gambier was officially declared a city in December 1954 and now recognized as the most important center in the southeast of South Australia. It has a temperate climate with warm dry summers and cool wet winters. The city is small and simple but rich in many beautiful parks and gardens, galleries, museums, markets and a variety of restaurants and shops including health stores that offer many organic products. You can learn the history and the geography of Mount Gambier at the Lady Nelson Visitor and Discovery Centre, where information is presented in interactive forms. The Buandic people were the original Aboriginal inhabitants of the area way before the European settlement. They called it Irang Balam or Egri Balam, meaning home of the eagle hawk. I wrote this little work on the Bawandic tribe, having been intimately acquainted with them for over 35 years. It is merely a journal on my life whilst in their midst, and I wish to assure you that I wrote it solely from a strong sense of duty. This once numerous and powerful tribe of southeastern natives has sadly withered away because of life cruelly forced upon them by European settlers. It is not difficult to understand their consternation and fear at the first sight of Europeans. About the year 1822 or 1823, the first ship was seen by the natives in Riverley Bay. They had no cure for snake bites. No amount of sucking and hissing could cure the one bitten, and they died. The manner in which the blacks performed the burial ceremony is most interesting. A grave is dug about three feet into the ground, and it is made perfectly round. A fire is made in it to warm the earth, but not enough to heat the body. The corpse is bent double, rolled in an opossum skin, and laid in the grave with its head toward the west. It is then covered with bark, and the grave is filled with earth. The blacks believe that after death, the spirit goes somewhere to the sea. Death found its way amongst our home inmates and the impact upon us all was very severe. The major industries in Mount Gambia include agriculture, forestry and tourism. The peak of the extinct Mount Gambia crater was sighted in 1800 by Lieutenant James Grant from the survey brig HMS Lady Nelson and named for Lord James Gambier, Admiral of the Fleet. With an area of 26.7 square kilometers, Mount Gambier is known for its interesting geography and wildlife, but perhaps the highlight of the place is its volcanic features, 
at the famous tourist attraction Blue Lake. The lake provides high quality artesian drinking water which changes color with the seasons. It is grayish blue in the winter and then changes to a spectacular cobalt blue in the summer, thus the name Blue Lake. ones include Valley Lake and Mount Shank, which lies about 12 kilometers south of Mount Gambier. It is part of the newer Volcanics province, which is considered the youngest volcanic field in Australia. Mount Shank erupted in the Holocene 5,000 years ago, about the same time as Mount Gambier. It is a basic ash cone of about 100 meters high, and because the base of the crater does not extend below the water table, there is no crater lake as with those at Mount Gambier. Even so, it's worth the visit, and it provides a good walk and some thrills. Besides the volcanoes, the region also has many water-filled caves and sinkholes, which attract cave divers from around the world. Driving down just 28 kilometers south of Mount Gambier, we reach the magnificent rugged coastline and natural beauty of Port Macdonald the southernmost port in South Australia with a population of less than a thousand people. It is especially a great destination for those who love water sports, fishing, surfing, boating, snorkeling, sailing, and for the more adventurous, internationally renowned sinkholes for cave diving. For a change of direction from Mount Gambia, we head up north to Pinola, which is just about half an hour drive to the heart of one of South Australia's most productive wine growing areas. It is a pretty little town with amazingly good cafes and restaurants and designer shops. The town is also known as the central location in the life of Mary MacKillop or Saint Mary of the Cross, the first Australian to gain Roman Catholic sainthood, who alongside with Julian Tennyson Woods in 1866 established the first free Catholic school. Petticoat Lane represents the oldest residential area of Pinola and is enhanced by red gum curbing, rose plantings and lavender and herb farm. One can wander through these historic timber and stone cottages that retain the charm of yesteryear. While in the area, one must not miss a beautiful drive up to Kunawara, which lies just to the north and is renowned for the quality of its wines.
Here we drive on west to Robe. Robe is situated on Gishin Bay, about 350 kilometers southeast of Adelaide. Nicolas Bouton, a French explorer, first spotted the bay in 1802, quickly resulting in the settlement of the township, and in 1846 the county was proclaimed after it was surveyed by Governor Robe, while Gishin Bay was named in honor of Admiral Du Gishin. By 1856, Robe became the second major colonial outport, attracting many settlers and merchants, until 1879, when several factors had led to the decline of Robe as a thriving port, including lack of confidence, poor agricultural season, and falling wool prices. Robe was thus closed as a port and became a quiet little country village until the 1940s when roads were extended making it easier for motor transport and summer visitors to arrive giving the town a huge comeback as a well-known tourist destination offering its charm and fine hospitality. There are over 84 restored historic buildings and sites by walking the streets and visiting these buildings, one can relive Robe's pioneering history. Old Jail was constructed in 1860-61 to and was on and off in its operation for several years until it finally closed down for good in 1881. Chinese monument was erected on the road for sure to commemorate the landing of over 17,500 Chinese who walked 400 kilometers from Robe to the Victorian gold fields. Perhaps the landmark of Robe is this obelisk which was erected on Cape Dombey in 1852. It was used to navigate the entrance to Gishin Bay as well as to store rocket life-saving equipment. The firing of rockets carrying baskets used for bringing passengers aboard distressed ships ashore saved many lives in those days. Unfortunately, the obelisk will eventually fall away because of the erosion of the land surrounding it. So, unless something is done to preserve this landmark, make sure you visit this icon while it lasts. Though Robe is a small town, it does have a vast range of culinary experiences cafes, casual dining, and pubs. Walk a bit up around the corner, you will come to a unique place where you can browse for books to buy or just sit in a comfortable chair and read. But be sure to ask for a cup of the finest locally roasted and brewed coffee, which is of course best with a piece of their homemade cake. On the road again and back to Mount Gambia to prepare a mouth-watering homemade dinner and snacks for our birthday girl, Charmaine. One of the many things folks in Mount Gambia are good at is the warm celebrations among family and friends. 